You know, it would have been a night like this, uh, that Lord's Supper, uh, as we know it, Jesus around the table with 12 of his closest friends. There would have been plates full of food. It probably w would have looked a bit different to this, but it was still a meal. It was still friends. It was still family around a table. And that night ended in a garden with Jesus being left totally alone. He had poured his heart out to God, saying, Father, if there is any way for this, this cup of suffering, the wrath that he was about to endure to be taken from him. But then he said, Lord, not my will, but yours. The evening ended alone in a garden, but it began here, a table with friends, people that he loved. And for, for some of them, uh, they would have actually, for all of them, they would have been around when Jesus last broke bread. Jesus picked up a loaf and, and in the middle of the meal, he, the, the Matthew 26 says he took it and he broke it. And he says, take this. And he handed it around the table. He said, take this and eat. This is my body. And the last time they probably would have seen him do it is when he broke bread and it fed 5,000 people. And this time he's breaking bread as a symbol and it's going to be food for the whole world. It's going to be his body broken. And he hands it around the table and he says, take this and eat it. Do this in remembrance of me. He said, this is my body. In the same way, he, he takes the cup and he hands that around the table. And he says, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he says, I tell you the truth. I'm not going to drink of this again until I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. That night began with a dinner table, and then he points forward to the end of eternity and he says, this is how it's all going to end. There's going to be a feast in my Father's kingdom. That essentially is communion as we know it. And, and for us in the Western church, most of you might experience communion as you know, a little piece of somewhat stale bread and, and maybe some juice. And you line up, you walk forward and you take it. But the first one was like this, people tearing a hunk off a loaf and drinking from a cup something powerful in that as, as, as wherever you gather over any meal, you can take bread, you can take wine, you can take juice, and there you get to sit and go, wow, what Jesus did and what it means for me. And so I guess I'd ask Stephen, as you look at the bread and as you take the wine, what comes to mind for you? Yeah, I mean, I think like the image of that table and all these people sitting around, it's something that we've done in our community as well. You know, we've been friends for many years and I feel really privileged by the amount of meals that were shared. Mm -hmm. But the priorities that he like he put in place, like the things that he put first, he had these twelve, you know, people around him um, that he was discipling and, and you know that he was friends with. And it was that community that, that, you know, comforted him and was there on that on that night. Um yeah, so I feel I feel like I just feel humbled by his priorities and what he's like um, delivered to us as an example of how to live um, and I think like every time we, we gather together around a table there's something really special about the way that we share a meal and, and whenever we're drinking and we remember him especially when we pray before a meal it's something that's really important in our household regardless of whether it's just you know one of us or especially if it's, it's a few of us gathering as a family or a group uh, to pray and just give thanks to him you know, it's such a constant reminder a daily reminder you know that, that he's with us and that that sacrifice is you know is ours eh? yeah amazing Natalia, for you? Uh, I was thinking about how we're sharing a meal together and the symbols represent Jesus' blood and his body and although we can do that in community, um, he would have done that for one person. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's quite overwhelming that he would have done that for one person mm -hmm. and it's so lovely to sit around a table and share that together um, and thank God for Jesus and his sacrifice um, for all of us and for the one <laughs> Yeah. Mm. yeah, amazing. And so for you, wherever you are watching this today, this is day one of our walking towards Resurrection Sunday at the Street Church. So maybe today for you, it's just over a meal, whether you're having, you know, a lovely meal like this, or whether it's stir fry or even eggs on toast, you can take bread and you can take wine and you can still pause and remember and say, wow, God, what you did for me. And so bless you as you enjoy this Easter weekend.